Today's New Testament epistle reading comes to us from Galatians, where Paul is writing to a fractured church, a church that he helped to start years before, but a church that had been influenced by others who were leading it astray, to say the least. There were strict constructionists, those who were called Judaizers, who were promoting a faith that said if anyone was going to be a good Christian, first of all, they had to be a practicing Jew. Paul had another idea, of course, one born of the love of God expressed in the life, death, resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so after he speaks to the issues that were splitting that congregation, he comes to the end of his little letter called Galatians, and he reminds them of this spirit of unity that is to be a part of everything they are. And he says, my friends, if anyone is detected in a transgression, you who have received the spirit should restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Take care that you yourselves not be tempted. Bear one another's burdens. And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. For if those who are nothing think they are something, they deceive themselves. All must test their own work. Then that work, rather than their neighbor's work, will become a cause for pride. For all must carry their own loads. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Today is another milestone in Bonnie and my life. Thirty years ago today, we moved here to northwest Iowa. And so as we mark a, an anniversary in our own life, it's been a time when I've reflected on what these 30 years have been. We finished rearing our children, sent them off to college in the late 80s and early 90s. We have been involved in each of us three or four different jobs and working for different entities here in the city. We've been involved in dealing with life and death issues, Bonnie's mother dying a few months ago or father nine years ago, dealing with ups and downs of life, dealing with our own pilgrimage of faith, ending up here at First Central. Recently, we have started another chapter in life called retirement. I work part-time for you. You are my boss, all of you, and uh, I enjoy it. I enjoy working 40 hours, not a week, but a month. It's great. And we're enjoying traveling, and some of you have heard about that. So when I saw the lectionary text for today from the New Testament, the, the gospel uh, being a familiar lesson too, but I picked up on this epistle lesson because it is so important to remind ourselves that the essence of Christianity is really bearing one another's burdens. Jesus said it well when he said the first commandment is love the Lord your God with your heart, mind, and soul, your whole being, and then love your neighbor as yourself. So this is that second great commandment, a commentary on what it means to love your neighbor as yourself. Because when we bear one another's burdens, we are living out the essence of Christianity. It is expressed in the life, the teaching, and ultimately the death and resurrection of Jesus. It is what our religion, our calling, our faith is all about. But Christ did not stay in the cross or in the tomb. He was resurrected to life. And he said to his disciples, go ahead, go on before me. In other words, not just to those disciples in that first Easter, but to all of us. Don't hang out in the graveyard, but go ahead into life. Be all that you can be, and I will go before you, and I will lead the way. So in the spirit of the resurrected Christ, Paul writes to these disciples, split, fractured, not knowing which way to go, but knowing that Paul had some answers in this letter. And so Paul has answers for us today. 
and the essence of it is bear one another's burdens. There are textual problems here. You might remember, uh, if you were listening or if you were reading along, the fifth verse kind of goes the other way. It says, let everyone carry his own load. So what's the deal? Do you bear one another's burdens? Are we here together? Are we a team helping one another along? Or do we just watch out for number one and take care of ourselves? The answer is not a both, but or is not either or, but a both and. For you see, the fifth verse is referring to accepting our responsibility to the best of our ability with all that God has given us to work with, we are to bear our own load, to carry our share of the load. But we know because of circumstances, things like tragedies, disease, mental illness, getting fired from a job or a job just disappearing, problems in our relationships and our families and our social settings, and on and on, a host of issues make it tough sometimes to even take care of ourselves. And so that's why Paul wrote here to this fractured church, remember, as you try to live out the Christian life, always bear one another's burdens. Bearing one another's burdens suggests the opportunity to serve others. And that is what Christianity is all about. So what are the ways that we bear one another's burdens? I think there is a being withness to the gospel. Being with another person sometimes it all, is all it takes. There was a friend of mine who we all, uh, many of us who have been active here, count as a friend who recently died, Al Jensen. And I will refer to Al again a little later, but I remember Al as one of those who uh, didn't do a lot of talking, admonishing, kind of telling us how to live it. He just showed it. And sometimes just being around a person like Al was enough. He and I connected because we had the same orthopedic surgeon. We helped, uh, we helped support his million dollar industry, I think, because we got a new apparatus uh, and we were able to I am able to walk better, and Al did for a while. But the point is that it was a being there with kind of an attitude that comforted me. And so it is, some of us are not gregarious, some of us are not extroverts, some of us are not the life of the party, but you know who matters a lot in relationships? It's the people who are quiet, who are there, who have a being with ministry. Sometimes sharing or lifting another's burden means reaching out. That's going a step further. As I was telling the kids, I went back uh, kind of a trip down Nostalgia Road last weekend, found out where I got hatched and where I live, and uh, went back to my home church, and uh, my friend Don came up and said hello to me, and Don was special to me, high school, Sunday school teacher, 4-H leader, a real role model and a mentor for me and so many other young people in our community. And then that got me to thinking about Don and his brothers, the, the other, one of his brothers, his little brother Wayne, uh, I saw the next day in another town at a gas station. And so I thought more about Don and Wayne brothers Willis and Kenny. And then when I thought of Kenny, I thought back to about five years ago when we went to a homecoming at our church in this little town of 300 in central Iowa. And different ones got up and shared testimonies about what the church had meant to them. And Kenny said, I'll always remember this church because you were there for us when our dad took his own life. And I thought, wow, what a profound ministry. That little church, mostly filled with farmers, small business people, what a profound ministry to help out this family at the lowest point in their life, this widow and these four little boys. Later on, in fact, the man I mentioned, Don, ended up at our house. 
Don's dad obviously suffered from depression. Don himself went through depression, was able to get help with his illness. And my father was, at that point, when Don came to see him on the couch, unable to move, unable to do anything, he was totally wiped out with depression himself. And Don came there, again, not a psychologist or a social worker, not anyone who had credentials, but there is a Christian brother supporting my father. This was reaching out. But sometimes being there and reaching out is not even enough. Sometimes we have to do some lifting up, and it can be heavy lifting. Jesus called this going the second mile, and going the second mile means that we have to risk something more of ourselves. The context does not matter so much as the inner attitude. And again, it's not something for the, necessarily for the extroverted and the gregarious. It's something that is born of an attitude, a behavior that's born of an attitude that is born of the love of God. It's a very personal endeavor. It usually involves some level of personal sacrifice and maybe even a little hardship. It takes time and energy and sometimes even some personal financial involvement. It involves risk, and so the level of the burden lifting requires a lot of prayer and it involves a lot of support from God. So our calling might be to simply be there or to reach out and it might be to lift up. But the main thing is we express this as the abiding love of God within us. What happens when we reach out, when we are present, or when we lift someone up? We keep life fresh. Throughout my ministry, I've had my shares, share of ups and downs, joy and discouragement, pain, and a lot of joy. But let me help lift a burden, and I'm brought back up again if I am down. Let me be able to reach out and help someone, and I feel better. Our capacity to reach out and change and share the gospel of Christ in some demonstrable way, that is a gift of God. And when we hoard that gift, guess what? It disappears. It becomes stagnant. It becomes sour, and it's the same thing if you hoard a lot of food in your refrigerator. Eventually, you're going to have things in there, and you don't know what they are, and you don't want to touch them, and you let alone eat them. And that's the way our faith can become too moldy and stale. But if we are bearing one another's burdens and looking for opportunities to share God's love, then life is fresh. When we reach out in this way, when we are lifting others' burdens, we maintain strength. In a single way, we are like a little thread that can be broken, but when we work together as a congregation, as individuals in groups, then we are strong. There's a spiritual truth here. This is why Paul wrote as he did to the Galatian church. He knew there were factions. He knew his words in this letter probably weren't gonna cure the factions, but he also knew that they needed to hear that they should lift one another's burdens. And guess what? When you're helping somebody out, then it probably doesn't matter which political party they're in or whether they're cheering for a certain team or another team or they grew up somewhere or somewhere else. Then it tends to equalize us. One of our own ways we've formalize this reaching out here at First Central is through our Befriender ministry. You can see Wendy Mambo Cat or Susan Dolezal or myself, and we can tell you more about that, but basically this is one-on-one -on -one reaching out, sharing our Christian support and love with others. It is mostly helping someone who is not able to be as active as they once were, although some of those that we see are here about every Sunday in church. 
And so in this way, we are able to give and to reach out in a way that expresses the love of Christ. I mentioned Al earlier. Al Jensen was uh, certainly beloved by this church, and I saw this lifting of burden ministry go on during his last weeks and months of life when many of you would take time to either call or stop by and see Al and Shirley and their family. And I know that ministry will go on into the future too as we continue to help and support Shirley, Mark, and Kay. So there's someone in your life who needs their burdens lifted. And there's someone that for them you are the manifestation of Christ in their life. And I would challenge you to seek out those persons to touch their lives, allow them to touch your heart, and to lift burdens. Amen.